Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to our session today on uh, what's new with Ascent's Autodesk Inventor 2013 courseware. My name is Jennifer McMillan, and I'm a mechanical engineer, and I've been working with Ascent for the past 17 years, currently in the role of Instructional Design Projects Manager. And in that role, I, uh, I manage all of the development of our Autodesk courseware, and I specifically work with the Inventor curriculum. So today what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a brief overview of what we're going to cover. And I'm going to start with just basically a little inside scoop on how I update all of our training guides. And then from there, we'll kind of get into more of the meat of the presentation in terms of dealing with what is specifically different and new in our uh, Inventor 2013 training guides. So in terms of how I update our training guides, Basically, from the moment that I gain access to the software, I review our What's New documentation, so anything I receive from Autodesk, and uh, I basically work with the software. So I get in there, work with it, and, uh, and play with the different features. And really, with that information, I have a good idea of which uh, changes need to be made in the different training guides, and I begin my update. So to update it, I would update all of the lecture material as well as all of the exercise files to make sure that... Uh, Everything will work smoothly in 2013. In addition to that, I'll also look at any comments uh, that I may have gotten over the past year in terms of uh, additional changes that may be, made, may be needed, and I'll, uh, I'll work those into the guide as well. From there, I pass it along to another subject matter expert who would uh, also work through the training guide as kind of a second set of eyes to, uh, to test everything in 2013. From there, then, it would go to our editorial review and uh, out for release. And then uh, once it's ready, it's available on our website. One of the, uh, the big questions I get uh, every year is kind of how do I uh, determine the, uh, the release date dates for our courseware. Basically, what I'll do is I'll look at uh, kind of history from the previous year, and I'll talk to our um, instructors, our uh, ATC partners and, uh, and our, our customers and just kind of figure out which, uh, which courses are most in demand. And from there, I develop um, a release date kind of procedure or schedule that uh, we do publish, actually. So this is available on our website. So you can see in this image here, this is um, what we call our release roadmap. And it's uh, on our website on ascented.com. And it basically will give you the dates that everything is uh, projected to be released. So you can see here in this image, um, all of our, um, our existing um, inventor curriculum has all been uh, released and is all available. And you can see that there is one new topic at the bottom of that list, and uh, we're going to be releasing an, a new iLogic course um, in December. So keep an eye out for that. So now kind of to get back into the, the meat of the presentation, what's new in our specific training guides. I'm going to kind of step through each of the different training guides and give you an idea um, in terms of uh, what's new. The first few slides that I'm going to cover today affect all of the training guides. So it's something you're going to see in uh, intro all the way down to uh, sheet metal. And uh, we'll go through those quickly, and then I'll get into specific course changes. So class file location, this is something that uh, we did this year to improve on how you can access the class files for your, um, for your classes and uh, for your books. And basically, we've um, included a URL link that you can type into a browser and um, download the latest and greatest class files for, uh, for the training guide. Um, Similar to uh, previous years, we also have uh, included the use of the uh, new in 2013 and enhanced in 2013 icons. So those are scattered throughout the uh, training guides to identify uh, the new material. Uh, the real difference here is that we changed the imagery. This uh, previous year was simply uh, text-based. Now we've just been, um, included a, a pointer finger to uh, identify the new content. Uh, edge Champers. This is an example here of where I have incorporated some new learning objectives. So this is something that we've done across the board with all of our courses, not just uh, Inventor, but we have made an effort to include the uh, a more um, specific learning objective. So as an instructor, you can uh, read these to your students to identify what it is they're going to learn in this section. And as a student, they can go back and review to be be sure that they did learn what they were supposed to learn in that uh, section. 
chapter review questions. This isn't something that is particularly new. However, what we did is we revamped them this year. They're all uh, multiple choice questions, and they're tied back to those learning objectives so that uh, students can verify that they've uh, learned something or learned the objective uh, that was in the chapter. Uh, as an instructor, too, you could uh, use this kind of as a point of discussion, um, as an open forum in the class, or you could just have the students go through and uh, work through the question. Last year when I was uh, at Autodesk University, it became really apparent to me that uh, a lot of users <coughs> were incorporating um, our training guides into their preparation time for uh, certification. So what we did this year to help out with that is we included some uh, highlighted um, areas in our book. So wherever um, a topic is covered by certification, we have included this information directly in the margin. So you can see here there's a little icon with the certification uh, logo here, and it identifies both the topic and the objective that is covered in that section. Um, to kind of follow up with that, we've added um, an appendix at the back of the book that identify all of the exam objectives and additionally where they can find that training material in our guides. So that kind of covers all of the um, changes that were kind of across the board. In terms of uh, specific changes to the classes, um, we'll start with our update class. So this is something that uh, we release every year with uh, with the release of a new software, and uh, our customers are actually quite excited when this book comes out. Um, this year what we decided to do based on customer feedback is that we made it a two-version update. So you can see here um, in the title of the course, it is uh, for 2011 and 2012 users. So it basically can uh, bring users that were existing at 2011 or 2012 up to uh, the 2013 functionality. And consistent with every year, um, what we do is we generally cover um, the interface, uh, sketching, features, general modeling techniques, so high-level kind of modeling changes that were made in the software, as well as drawing. So these are the chapters that uh, the course is divided out into. And this is a one-day class that uh, is, is available to you. So the next course that I wanted to uh, discuss was the Intro to Solid Modeling class, and this is definitely um, the the biggest of the uh, of all the courses. It um, is basically where the students would take this content to start off with Inventor. So it's a, it's a five day class, and the majority of changes for 2013 were done in in this course. The the biggest one actually, and one that involved probably the most changing in the book was dealing with Autodesk's um, new um, change that allows for the explicit selection of the sketch plane. So in previous years, you had to, uh, it defaulted to the selection of the XY plane. And now what they're allowing you to do is actually explicitly select it yourself. So basically all of the, uh, the general steps needed to be rewritten in the lecture material to, uh, to state this change. And as well, a lot of changes were made in the exercises to um, allow for those steps, so to, have, to, to guide somebody through making those selections. Primitive features was another uh, nice addition that uh, was made in the software. And this was something that uh, I also found uh, very important and was important to add into, uh, into the course early on. So this is an option that uh, students can use to create their base features. So now in Chapter 2, there's a whole section on primitive base features. And there's also an accompanying exercise that goes with that. Uh, Share Sketch isn't um, actually any new functionality in, uh, in Inventor in 2013. However, one of the comments that I got from, uh, from an ex experienced instructor was that the book did a good job, for sure, of explaining Share Sketch. However, the students didn't get the opportunity to actually practice that with an explicit exercise. So what I did here was I added um, a share sketch exercise, and basically it allows the uh, student to open a model and use that uh, sketch in the model to create multiple features to incorporate uh, the use of that uh, functionality. Uh, in terms of um, getting feedback from instructors, I also had a really good conversation with um, an instructor at Autodesk University last year 
where they mentioned to me that they uh, they thought that we could do a little bit better job at explaining the uh, the various ways that the same thing could be done in the software. So in terms of an example here, completing the feature. Um, there's lots of different ways that someone could complete a feature. So you can click the mini, click in the mini toolbar or the OK button or even just a right click. Um, so what I've done throughout the book, and you'll see as you kind of get used to using this training court content, is that all of the different ways to do something have been included in the book. And ultimately, as an instructor, you know, it's your job to uh, pass this on to your students. And, and in the end, ultimately, it's their decision as to how they want to do it. But at least you've kind of explained to them the different ways that it can be done. Um, this one, again, isn't anything new functionality-wise in 2013. However, um, I wanted to improve on the, uh, the patterned uh, exercise. So previous example really was a, a planar model. Um, that allowed for, um, you know, pretty straightforward patterning. And what I've done now is I've incorporated the use of the additional pattern option. So um, that expanded options in the uh, dialog box. And I've created a, a little more complex um, a patterning example. So, again, just improving on the book to, uh, to allow the students to practice a little bit more. Another functionality change, so back to functionality changes in 2013, is model color. So the way that um, appearances and color are all assigned to an inventor model has changed substantially in 2013. And in the intro book, um, we discussed this here. You can see that it talks about um, where you assign your materials and how to assign your model color. So that's all been, uh, been updated to reflect the new way of doing it. Another new exercise that was incorporated was dealing with assembly parts and features. Um, so I looked at simplifying the model that we had uh, existing in there before to allow the students to really practice and focus on exactly what it was that uh, they needed to do. So focus specifically on creating the assembly parts and features. So a new exercise there to uh, replace the uh, mold assembly ex exercise. As I was uh, reviewing the uh, documentation, the What's New documentation for 2013, there were a couple um, enhancements, small enhancements, but enhancements uh, for sheets. And when I started looking at incorporating those into the training guide, I realized there really wasn't a lot of uh, content written on uh, drawing sheets. So I incorporated a new uh, section on drawing sheets. It's uh, in chapter 25 dealing with um, annotations. So uh, basically it's a, it's a new section that has been added dealing with uh, how users can use sheets. So that kind of wraps up all of the intro level uh, changes. And now getting into the advanced part modeling class. So this is kind of where the second most uh, number of changes were made. And again, um, we discussed in the previous exercise appearances. So this is something that was changed. And the majority of uh, the explanation on this new functionality is all in this advanced part uh, training class. So it talks about the appearance browser, the uh, in Canvas tools, those types of things are all covered in this section in the advanced part class. And here's a good example as well of um, reference to certification. So you can see here in this appearances, there are, um, there's an objective that's required for certification. Splines, uh, this is also again uh, been enhanced functionality in 2013. Um, splines have been around, however, now they've uh, added a second way to create a spline. So now instead of just uh, creating a spline by interpolation, you can go through and uh, define it using your control vertices. And all of the material has been updated in the book to reflect this. And uh, last but not least, uh, attaching point cloud data. So this is also new functionality in 2013. So this is something that we've incorporated into the, um, the translation uh, chapter. So basically bringing in data from an external source um, using point cloud data. So there's just uh, been some information in included on, on that functionality. So the remaining classes that uh, we have in our, um, our suite of inventor titles are kind of listed here. Um, tube and pipe and cable and harness, there, there were no major changes to that functionality at all. So those books are uh, very much like they were in 2013. Uh, the sheet metal class 
reflects the one change actually dealing with the sketch plane. So in terms of creating your base feature in sheet metal, the functionality on uh, now um, being um, able to select that sketch plane has also been incorporated into sheet metal chapter. And then in terms of advanced assembly, the only real change that was affected there was again dealing with appearances. So in the Inventor Studio chapter, we cover appearances and uh, making your models look better, and the functionality in there has also been updated to reflect uh, those changes. So I've been kind of telling you a little bit about how I make my changes, and uh, we absolutely appreciate the customer feedback. So what I've done here is I've just kind of highlighted some different ways that you can keep in contact with us, some different um, avenues to do that. And uh, this one, um, Email address is a great way to uh, to get in touch with me and uh, provide some feedback on courseware if uh, you have nothing to let us know. So I wanted to uh, thank you for joining us today, and 